Hello guys, how are you? I'm Hadeep Singh. Welcome back to your own YouTube channel. IELTS updates and recent exams. For more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing test topics, listening, reading, practice test, and speaking, you can just work. Please guys, participate in everyday listening and reading practice test to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page IELTS updates and recent exams. Part 1 You will hear a woman and a man talking about their work at a library. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hello, I'm Mrs. Phillips, the head librarian. You're the new library assistant, aren't you? Yes, I'm Robert Haskell, but please call me Bob. All right, Bob. Let me take a few minutes to explain how the library works and what your duties will be. First, the library opens at 8.30 in the morning, so naturally we expect you to be here and ready to work by then. Of course. And you can go home at 4.30 when the library closes. Now, let me explain where everything's kept. It looks like here on the ground floor is where the reference books are. Yes, that's right. Up on the second floor is where the adult collection is, both fiction and non-fiction. And the children's books are there too, aren't they? I thought I saw them in the room by the stairway. No, those are magazines and newspapers for adults. Children's books are up one more flight on the third floor. We'll take a look at them later. Let me show you how we organize our work. Do you see that brown book cart over there? The one by the door? Yes, that one. Those books have been checked in and need to go back on the shelves. Okay, so the brown book cart has books to reshelve. What about this black cart by the desk? Those books have torn pages or damaged covers. They're all books that need to be repaired. Okay, I know how to do a lot of that. I'm pretty good at mending torn pages and covers. That's great, because we really need help with that. And that white cart in the corner, what are those books for? Those are old books that we've taken off the shelves to make room for new ones. We sell them as used books to raise money for the library. So they're all ready to sell? Yes, that's right. So now you know what to do with the books in the carts. Let's talk about our activities schedule. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. I understand this library has a number of interesting activities every week. Yes, our activities are quite popular. The most popular one is story time for the children. Do a lot of children show up for that? Yes, a good many. It takes place in the children's room on Thursday mornings at 11. Isn't there a family movie night too? Yes, but it's not at night anymore. We used to have family movies on Fridays when the library is open until 9, but now we have a different activity at that time, so we had to switch family movies to the weekend, Saturday afternoon. How much do you charge for the movies? They're all free. The movie always starts at 2.30 in the reference room, but you don't have to worry about that since you don't work on weekends. And what takes place on Friday evenings? We've just started a weekly lecture series. We have a different speaker every week, and the lectures cover all different kinds of topics. That sounds like something I'd be interested in attending. Good, because we'll need your help with that. You'll be working Friday evenings, and one of your duties will be to set up the meeting room on the first floor for the lecture. What time will you need that done? Let's say by 6.15. The lecture starts at 6.30, and the room needs to be ready well ahead of time. A lot of people arrive early. Maybe I should have the room ready by 6? That wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, why don't I take you upstairs and show you the rest of the collection? 
That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You will hear a radio interview about a lakeside resort. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's show. The warm months are with us, and many of you are getting ready to plan vacation trips. To help you with that, we have a special guest today, Robert Sampson, director of the Golden Lake Resort. Robert, I understand Golden Lake is a popular place for families to spend their vacations. Yes, families enjoy spending time at Golden Lake. Many come back year after year. We have a spectacular location and fun activities for both children and adults. Could you describe for us some of the activities available at Golden Lake? We have a lot of water activities, of course, since we're right on the lake. We have a pleasant sandy beach for swimming. We also have canoes and sailboats available, and many of our guests enjoy boating on the lake. I imagine water skiing would be popular among your guests. Actually, we don't permit water skiing in the resort area. It can be dangerous for swimmers and for the canoeists too. We do have a great location for fishing though, and you'll often see guests fishing from our dock or from the canoes. That sounds very relaxing. What about activities on land? Do you have facilities for tennis? We had tennis in the past, but the courts fell out of repair. And since we found that most of our guests weren't interested in the game, we closed the courts down. So that's no longer an option. And naturally, because of our location in the woods, we don't have an adequate area for a golf course. But I'd like to let your listeners know that we'll be adding a new activity this year. We've made an arrangement with the local stable, so now we're going to have horseback riding available for our guests. We've created several riding trails around the lake. That sounds lovely. Now, what about rainy days? What can your guests do when the weather's bad? We have a games room and a crafts room. When the weather's rainy, some of our very talented staff members offer arts and crafts classes for all ages. What fun! Do you offer any other classes or activities? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20, We have a weekly schedule of evening activities, which anyone can attend if they choose. Every Sunday we show a film, always something that's suitable for the whole family. Monday's my favourite night because that's dessert night. Our cook prepares a variety of desserts and we get to taste them all. Mmm, I'd like to be there for that. Yes, it's great. We get more serious toward the middle of the week. Our discussion night is on Tuesday. Discussion night? Yes, we discuss different current events, depending on what's happening that week in the news. Then on Wednesdays, we have lectures. We invite different experts to talk about local history or nature topics. This is actually one of our most popular evening activities. We found that our guests are really interested in learning about the local area. It sounds quite interesting. Yes, we've had some excellent speakers. Thursday nights are totally different, because that's when we play games. That's especially fun for the children. The children love Fridays too. 
because that's talent show night. Everyone gets in on that. Staff, guests, everyone. It looks like you have a lot of fun at Golden Lake Resort. We do. And we end every week with big fun, with a dance on Saturday night. Now I understand a little more why Golden Lake is such a popular place for family vacations. With such a variety of activities, there's something for every member of the family there. There is. And I hope your listeners will consider spending their next vacation with us. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. You will hear two students, Ramil and Kirsten, discussing presenting a paper at an architecture conference. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 28. Hi, Kirsten. Have you heard about that architecture conference in Oxford at the end of the year? Yeah. I saw the leaflet on the notice board. As it's my final year, I ought to try giving a paper. But I've got no idea how to go about it. Oh, I think you should go for it. <sighs> I did one last year. It's quite straightforward. First of all, you need to see what the conference themes are. You know, what topics they're covering. Mm. You can do that by looking it up on the website. You need to submit a paper that falls into one of the categories they give you. Oh, that may give me some ideas. Then, while you're doing that, you should also have a look at the information on how to submit your paper. Mm. The rules, if you like, such as the length. It's important you follow those. I see. And then I suppose the next stage is to start writing it up. Mm -hmm. I'd like to use it as an opportunity to propose some future work, but I understand it must be based on current work. Still, there's plenty to choose from. It makes sense to do something that I'm more familiar with. Yes, and the other thing is, when you've written it up, then go back and look at your data carefully and make certain that you've presented it in a format that is standard for your subject. <sighs> Remember, people have to absorb information very quickly while they're listening. Don't make it too complicated. OK, well, I reckon that'll take me about a month to get that sorted. Then the next thing I have to do, I guess, before I send it off to the conference organizer, is give the whole thing to the events officer so that he can look through it and see if it all makes sense and is OK. Yeah. Remember to warn him that it's en route so he can fit it into his schedule. Oh. Then you're done, really. All you have to do after that is to go through it and sort out any changes you need to make. Then finally, you can submit it. You can do that online. Phew. Good. Then I just wait to hear, I suppose. How long does that take? Mm, it depends, but usually about six weeks. Oh. When you hear if your paper has been accepted, then at that stage it's worth giving them a list of any technical things you need when you actually give the talk. Mm -hmm. A screen or video players or that sort of thing. OK, but that's a long way off. Mm. <laughs> and I know that if my paper is accepted, then at that stage I have to give them a short text about myself and my academic background so that they can put it in the brochure. <sighs> Famous at last. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Right. Well, I've got to get a couple of things sorted if I'm going to get this paper completed. Have you got enough data? Possibly. I'd like to reinforce some of it, though, so I thought I'd send out some more questionnaires. I was looking at that thesis that Angela wrote last year, and she said you need a sample of over a hundred to be sure of your results. I think some of this year's postgraduates are doing some of the same stuff as you on buildings. Why don't you talk to them? No,、uh, I'll end up getting confused. It would be more useful for me to actually go out to that site by the rail bridge to see how they're building the new factory. Oh, I managed to get hold of Professor Barnett at London University, and he said I should go out and take pictures. I'm pretty busy, but I'll have to make time. Anyway, what about you? What are your plans? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. You will hear part of a lecture on the current and future use of mobile phones. You now have thirty seconds to read questions thirty-one to forty. Okay. Now today we're looking at changes in communication, and specifically changes that have just happened or are likely to happen in the next few years. Key to this is the mobile phone, which is increasingly being seen as an all-purpose system rather than just a phone. If you only use your phone for texting and making calls now. You will be amazed at how you'll be using it in the future. The technology has been developed for a range of other uses. For example, phones could be used so that if you are meeting someone and they get lost, you could send them a map of your location to help them. This will save all those complicated explanations over the phone. And our poor friends or colleagues trying to drive and find out where they are at the same time. And if you get bored waiting, or if you're traveling, for example, you will soon be able to see TV news on your phone as it is actually being broadcast. This means that you won't have to miss any of your favorites if you are away for a few days. Most people have got used to texting now. And young people send pictures to each other, but what is exciting is the possibility of putting music with them before you send them. And it's not all frivolous. Phones are going to become even more critical in business and education. Some recent developments have a highly practical usage. So, for example, as lecturers, we will be able to send everybody a text. To let them know if lectures have been cancelled, and the new phones could have a further use in education as well as business, as they will enable us to go to any destination, such as when we are doing a field trip, for instance, and from there to send data directly to a computer so that we can access it when we get home. This means we will no longer be limited by what the phone can store. And it's interesting to look at the different ways that men and women use phones now, as that does affect how the technology will develop. Some research has been done on how people use phones, and some of the results are surprising. One of the increasing usages of mobile phones is to get all sorts of data, such as phone numbers, the weather, 
train times, etc. And while there's been an attempt to set up connections with things that women might be interested in accessing, it is overwhelmingly men who do this. But what about the traditional use of a phone to speak to people? I suppose we would predict that it is mainly women who use phones as a method of contact for friends and family, but in fact, the genders exploit this facility equally. I've spoken about the increased business usages that phones will offer, and I suppose we would associate this usage with men. The survey picked up, though, that women are often working from home or catching up with work in the evenings, so they use phones in this way as much as men do. Most of us are aware we can store photos on our phones. It's an ideal method of capturing a moment wherever you are. Women tend to be the group that keep photos on their phones, but it seems that men use their phones to actually take pictures much more than women do. And of course, all this knowledge affects the marketing that the companies will do in order to sell the That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing us topics, listening, reading, practice test and speaking you got guesswork. Please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. For more IELTS material visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is given below in the description. If you need PDF files of latest IELTS material then please join my telegram channel. So guys please write your score below the comment section. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all guys. Stay tuned. Stay safe.